face. Right. And it smashed the camera completely. But the camera saved my life. And um, so I had a bad concussion. So when I made this picture here, the Tank Man Club, I was very dizzy. Um, I was very sick with a cold. And, and so uh, when the man walked out into the street, uh, I was at the Beijing Hotel. Because that was the closest to where the, uh, the Occupy Tiananmen Square was. And uh, when I took this picture, you know, at the time I thought he was going to mess up my composition. And uh, Kirk Martin, an American student, who was very helpful, he got me into his room, uh, past the secret police. Um, he says, oh, they're going to kill this guy, they're going to kill him. And so I just waited for the minute that they could photograph. I mean, just waiting for the minute to photograph for the man to be killed. But they don't kill him. So um, eventually, uh, I looked at my camera and I had my uh, shutter speed, it was too slow. And I remember that Kirk brought me one roll of film with a different uh, speed. And so I didn't think about that. And by the time I realized what happened, the man was taken away. So I thought I had to lose the picture. And then gave it to uh, the Associated Press office. Yep. And they ran it. And the next day, uh, newspapers and magazines all over the world uh, were using this picture on the front page. So it was incredible. I was so lucky because yeah. that's an impossible picture. I, it's a miracle. Yeah. It's truly a miracle that it came out. Yeah, and I remember that um, you are also running out of film and that you need to borrow it from someone else, right? To take yeah, well, picture. I ran. See, I couldn't carry a lot of film. Because yep. if I have a lot of film and a lot of cameras, the soldiers see. So I have to hide everything in my jacket. And yeah. I have to hide the film in my shorts. And so I can't put very much right. uh, film. And so I take many pictures, finish. Right. And I ask Kurt for help. And he, I expect maybe he finds maybe 20, 30 rolls of film, but he finds one. Wow. Only one roll. Wow. And so that one roll that Kurt got me is what made this picture. And Kurt risked his life because there are many soldiers in the streets that yeah. are shooting people. Yeah. And Kirk risked his life to take that film to the American Embassy. Wow. So I really owe him a big favor. Yeah. And also, how do you come Well, you know, uh, I returned for the 25th anniversary. It's a silver anniversary. It's sort of like a high school reunion. Yep. And it just seemed like the right thing to do for me. Yeah. Because this is part of my life now. Yep. And, uh, as much as I'm an artist and I would like people to look at my other pictures, yeah. I'm always going to be in the shadow of Tank Man. But so I, I stopped fighting Tank Man. And so I, I thought that this probably is the last time I can come for a big anniversary because I probably won't be alive on the 50th anniversary. Right. So that's why I came uh, uh, to Hong Kong. Yeah. And I'm coming here to visit old friends and uh, revisit my nostalgic days here when I was a correspondent, uh, correspondent here in yeah. Bangkok. Cool. And um, can you tell us a bit about the commemoration event in Hong um, Kong? Well, I only had a short amount of time yep. because I literally had just TV interviews and magazine interviews from around the world and I felt like an air traffic controller trying to get them all lined up. So I only had two hours to go to the vigil. But when I got there, it was a strange experience. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it was so much uh, vibration. People. It, it was almost scary. Vibration? Yeah, you could feel the energy of everybody. You could feel their thoughts. You could feel the, the tension. Uh, and it was an amazing uh, situation with all the candles lit. Right. I, I just was, it was very moving, and very emotional. Many, and how many people were there? Three thousands, thousands. I don't know, maybe hundreds, maybe uh, over a hundred thousand. Wow. This is one of my favorite pictures of Princess Diana. I took this in uh, Chiang Mai, yep. and I believe it was 1988 when Charles and Diana were still together. Right. And I remember there was a lot of British press photographers, and I was the only American. So imagine being the only American with a lot of British photographers. It was a bit, uh, I had to take a, uh, a lot of heat. Yeah. And so, but uh, she was absolutely beautiful. I mean, I just I was overwhelmed by her beauty. And this is, what I like about this photo is, it's so, she looks just like a, a, a natural girl, you know, a girl who would just, you know, look at herself in a mirror instead of uh, posing for the camera. She just, she just looks like uh, That's a natural grace. It's a natural grace, and it just shows that she's a woman like any other woman, you know? And so this is one of the things I really love about this picture. And this is the, this gentleman here is the owner of the Umbrella Factory. 